All right, so for number 11, we have that a newspaper vendor in Singapore is trying to predict how many copies of the Straits Times they will sell. The vendor forms a model to predict the number of copies sold each weekday, and according to this model, they expect, keyword here, expect the same number of copies will be sold each day. Expect what? The same number of copies will be sold each day. To test the model, they record the number of copies sold each day during a particular week. The data is shown in the table. So this is like the actual data that was got, gathered. See, this is not what is expected. It is the actual data. They tell us that a goodness of fit test at the 5% significance level is used on this data to determine whether vendors' model, model is suitable, that the critical value is blah, that H0 and H1 is blah and blah. See? All right, so a couple of important things before we jump into the problem. First of all, they give us significance level and they give us a critical value, see? And so the, that is useful stuff that we need in order to conclude for our tests. Second of all, H0 and H1 is in words and does not really have to do with means. See, it does not have to do with means. So we are straying away from the t-test. T-test is usually for any means. And they actually tell us that we are dealing with a goodness of fit test, which is this chi-squared goth on your calculator. See, so goodness of fit test, chi-squared goth. That it? Uh, yeah, and what are our expected values? Well, we expect the same number of copies will be sold each day. So part A actually has a little bit to do with that. We need to estimate how many copies the vendor expects to sell each day. And so the way that we do that is that we take the actual um, observed amount, which is, you know, 74, 97, 91, 86, 112. So this is what we observed and divided by 5. So whatever that is, is going to be our expected value or expected table. We're going to put 92 here. That is what the calculator gives us. See, So that is for part A. It's an estimate because we are taking the mean of our observed values. We divide by 5 because we do have 5 days Monday through Friday. For part B, part I, we have to write down the degrees of freedom for this test. And degrees of freedom... Um, is one of the things you just kind of have to memorize. It's not in the form of a booklet, so that kind of blows. But the formula in this case, because it's a single variable, because it's a single variable, is simply n minus 1, with n being the amount of columns that we're dealing with. And so how many columns do we have? We have one column, 2, 3, 4, 5, n minus 1, 5 minus 1. That means our degrees of freedom is going to be 4. That is part B, part I. Part B, part double I is where it gets juicy. We need to write down the conclusions for this test and give a reason for our answer. So, it's very important to make a difference between observed and expected values in this case. As we've seen, this right here are our observed values, which means that our expected values is for the same numbers of copies to be sold each day. So this is gonna be expected, same no amount of copies. What number will that be? It will be this number here, 92, because it's the estimate that we did earlier. Cierto? Awesome. Also, it's worth mentioning, something from part B needed something from part A. That is a very, very common trend. If you're not sure what to do in part B, look at what you did in part A. Many times it can help, not always. Okay? Yapo, so for concluding, we have significance level and critical value. All right, so if I go ahead and pull up my calculator, see, and I go to stat edit, see, because we are working with a statistics problem, L1 is going to be observed, L2 is going to be expected, see, so as you can see, my observed is the same values that I have on my table, my expected is the 92 that I calculated from part A, now we go to a test, cierto? and we go to chi-squared golf test, see, here in the golf test, we see that observed is going to be L1, expected L2, exactly as we have it set up in our, um, table earlier, cierto? and DF stands for degrees of freedom. We know that degrees of freedom is 4. We go ahead and calculate. See, So here we get a chi-squared value and a p-value. See, So I'm going to write those down real quick. My chi-squared value see, is 8.54 and my p-value is 0 0.0736. See? So what's important to notice here is which of these gets compared to critical value, which of these gets compared to significance level, see? And so your critical value, this guy here, see? So your critical value, which is 9.49, is what gets compared to the chi-squared value. So here we have our chi-squared with our critical value, see? Which is 
9.49. I'll talk in a second how it gets compared. Um, and the other two that get, gets compared is the p-value with the significance level. See? So this is the first thing that you really have to like internalize. P-value goes with significance level. Um, your chi-squared or t-value or any of the other stuff is going to be compared to your critical value. See? So significance level we said was 0 0.05 because of 5%. Is that it? All right. So you can conclude from either of these points. See, So you can either draw the conclusion from here or from here. The conclusion is the same. This is how it works. If your chi-squared is greater than critical value, we reject HO. If your p-value is greater than your significance level, we will accept HO. See? Or another way you can think about it is fail to reject. H O T, and so those are the two scenarios, cierto? So if you memorize, because you have, you kind of have to memorize it. See, one of those things you have to memorize. If you memorize these two scenarios, cierto, you can conclude any, any sort of test that you just have to. This is like your compass. See, if you memorize this, this is your compass. This is your guidebook. Stick to it, and you can draw the conclusions you want. With the first case, ¿cierto? I'm going to compare chi-squared to critical value. We have 8.54 is actually less than 9.49. So does this look like that? No, it's actually the opposite. And so in this case, our conclusion is going to be fail to reject HO. See, that is with the first example here in orange. ¿Dale? If I go with the second example that we're going to do in whatever, purple, see? Actually, purple doesn't really. Let's go with blue. That it? Light blue. Um, our p value we said was ba, 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 0 0.0736. And this p value is greater than the significance level, which is 0 0.05. And so here, again, does it look like that? It actually does. And so our conclusion is fail to reject. HO. As you can see, we reached the same conclusion from either angle. Um, you can approach this problem from either side. See? So as long as you conclude that you fail to reject HO and you put these symbols here, which are very, very important, ¿vale? like that symbol, the greater, less than or greater than, uh, you're good to go. See? So either of these approaches work. At the end of the day, you, your conclusion is that you fail to reject HO. See? Really, really try to keep in mind what goes with what in respects to chi-squared with critical value and p-value with significance level. This is unfortunately one of the few things you just kind of have to memorize, but hey, once you do, you figure them all out. So that is number 11.